how did we come up with the idea of QX? Well, it wasn't my idea, to be honest. I was part of the, the, the moving on, but the first idea came from Emmanuel, my co-founder. He was, and he still is, a Wikipedian, and he wanted to share Wikipedia with his mom. But she's living in the countryside, and, you know, um, things in the countryside are always a little slower, I should say. It, it's nice most of the time, but when it comes to internet connectivity, it's actually not that great. So Emmanuel, being a developer, he decided to put Wikipedia on a DVD. I, it's that old. And he brought it to his mom. And I, then I came on board and I was like, and he started to share it around and it worked. And I was like, you know, it shows that lots of people are actually in need of having an offline copy of the internet because there are many, many reasons why they can't. And so here we are today, six years later, we have at least 8 million users worldwide. I say at least because since they're offline, most of the time they don't ping us. So those are the ones that we, we hear from, but there's many more. They're in 200 plus countries. So everyone everywhere has a story about QX. Who is using QX in the world? I would say pretty much everyone at some point has a reason to. We have at least 8 million users worldwide in 200 plus countries. So every country and territory in the world has at least someone who wants to download QX. And when I say this, I mean from A, like Antarctica, to V, like the Vatican, or Vanuatu, or Zanzibar. I mean, there's always a reason. Um, it can be like because internet is not accessible. It's a countryside. So it could be a rural schools in West Africa. It could be Antarctica, where satellites only come over five hours a day, and they, they need to have some resources available during the other 19 hours. It could be prisons. Um, because in that case, that's more like akin to censorship. China would also be a market where uh, people download QX, not because they don't have internet access, but because they don't have internet, they don't have access to all of the internet. And it could be also because of costs. So schools, for instance, are uh, community centers in the Andes, in West Africa, in India. Um, those are regions where people would also need to, to access QX. And not just Wikipedia, but any kind of resource. Literally, we're striving to provide a copy of the internet. So Stack Overflow for, for developers is a good one. And we have also copies of YouTube, anything that people need. I mean, people use the internet, so they should be using QX for the same thing. I'm pretty happy about working with Afwa because at the end of the day, we at QX only produce the software. So it's a free and open source software, which means that you're free to use it, you're free to share it, you're free to modify it, look into the code and you know see what, what we're doing. But we need to bring this software to people who actually need it. And that's where Ofwa comes into play. Ofwa is actually coming to people, coming to school, saying, hey, here's your issue. You cannot access all the resources that are on the internet, but we have a tool. We have a tool that can bring you those reaches to your classes. And there are our ears and eyes on the ground because the, this goes both ways. They bring QX, but then they give also feedback on what is needed, who does what, what works, what doesn't work. And that's how we, we improve. Um, there's no other way. So I'm extremely grateful to Afwa, and I wish that the collaboration will continue for a long time.